Hey everyone, welcome to the AZ104 exam preparation series and recently I am sure that you know that Microsoft has replaced Azure AD with Microsoft Entra ID. A very important change and lot of questions are also coming related to the Microsoft Entra ID in the AZ104 exam. So I thought compiling some questions, very important latest question for you on Microsoft Entra ID so that you can prepare on this very important and the latest concept. And besides that, do not forget to check out the previous episode where I covered some latest and important questions on Azure Virtual Machines. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started with this episode. Here comes the first question for today. Question number 186, part 32. Now listen to the question very carefully. Your company has a Microsoft 365 tenant and a Microsoft Entra ID tenant named Contoso.com. Now the company uses several Azure Files shares and each share is assigned to a different department at your company. So I hope you understood until now we have Microsoft Intro ID tenant named Contoso.com that is using Azure file shares and each share or file share is assigned to a different department in the company. Further the question is saying that the department attribute in the Microsoft Intro ID is populated for all the users and you need to ensure that the users can access the department file shares. Which two type of groups should you use and each correct answer presents the complete solution. So it's very important to understand or let me say in short this question wants you to set up dynamic membership rule for groups in Microsoft Intro ID. Now let's check out what are the options given. Option A a security group that uses the dynamic membership type. Option B a distribution group that uses dynamic membership type. Option C a Microsoft 365 group that uses dynamic membership type. Option D a security group that uses assigned membership type and option E a Microsoft 365 group that uses assigned membership type. And the very first correct option is option A a security group that uses the dynamic membership type and then we have option C a Microsoft 365 group that uses the dynamic membership type. Now guys listen to this very carefully that the groups that uses the dynamic membership rules they kind of reduce the overhead of the access management by providing attribute based membership and also access to the resources. So based on the membership rules the members and the resulting access can be granted and removed automatically. So let me show you some documentation on the same. So here it comes it says dynamic membership rules for the groups in Microsoft Intro ID. So first of all you can see that we have to create the attribute based rules to enable the dynamic membership for a group in Microsoft Intra ID which is of course the part of Microsoft Intra. And then you can also note that you can set up a rule for dynamic membership on the security groups or the Microsoft 365 groups. And those are the exact options that we have also picked. So Microsoft documentation validates our answers. Do check out our other series or other videos on all the popular exam series on Microsoft Azure and Amazon AWS. And let me tell you all the series, all the videos are absolutely free. You do not have to pay anything. The only request I have for you is that please like the video. This is the only way for us to expand and reach to more audience. And with that, let's move on to the next question. Question number 187 that says that you have Microsoft Intra ID tenant named Contoso.com. Now you need to ensure that a user which is named as user1 can review all the settings of the tenant and the user1 must be prevented from changing any setting. Which role should you assign to the user1? So it's very important in the question that you understand the keywords or the hints given in the question. And that is that the user one can review all the settings of the tenant but it must be prevented from changing any setting. So although the user one should be able to review the settings but it should not be allowed to change any setting. And the options given are option A directory reader, option B security reader, option C reports reader and option D global reader. So read the question once again think about what all the question is asking for and then answer the question and match up with the answer that I am giving now and the correct answer is option D global reader. And just so you understand a user that is assigned the global reader role is actually prevented from making any modifications and that's the ask of the question as well. And this role is basically a read only version of the global administrator and that allows the users to read the settings. It allows the users to traverse through all the administrative information across all the services 
But then as the question is asking, the global reader is prevented from making any changes. So now let's validate our answer on the Microsoft documentation. Here you can see that we have information on global reader. First of all, to notice that this is a privileged access. What is the privileged role? You can see and understand from this link provided here. Well, these kind of roles and the permissions can be used to delegate the management of the directory resources to other users, modify the credentials, authentication, authorization policies or access restricted data. So the privileged role assignments can lead to elevation of privilege if not used in a secure and intended manner. So these roles, my friends, they should be assigned with the real caution. Coming back to the main documentation, here you can read that the global reader is a read only counterpart of the global administrator. As I just mentioned, what does this mean? Well, the global reader, like the global administrator, can review and read all the settings. But unlike the global administrator, the global reader cannot make change to any of the settings. And that's exactly the ask of the question as well. So global reader is the correct answer. And as always, my friends, links to all the documentation that I'm referring in this video is shared in the description box. So in the description box, you're given the link for this Word document or this Google Word document where you can find the links to all the episodes where you can find the links to all the documentation that we have referred in any of the episodes. So here you can see that we are given with this index here. So in case you want to reach out to any episode, let's say that you want to reach out to the episode number nine, just come here, click on this, and here you will be able to reach out to all the documentation. So this is how you can access the entire set of documentation, the legit Microsoft documentation, absolutely free. So please make the best out of it. And with that, let's jump on to the next question. Question number 188 that says that you have a Microsoft Intro ID tenant named Contoso.com and you have to deploy a development intro ID tenant and then you want to create several custom administrative roles in the development tenant and after that you need to copy the roles to the production tenant. What should you do first? And your options are from the development tenant export the custom roles to the JSON. Then option B from the production tenant create a new custom role. Then option C from the development tenant perform a backup and then option D from the production tenant create an administrative unit. Now friends, the question is asking you to copy the roles. So here you can see that we need to copy the roles from the development intro ID tenant to the production tenant. And that is why the option B is ruled out because in option B, it talks about creating new role, but we do not want to create, we just want to copy. And then coming to the option C, this is also not suited as the backup will not help. And finally, option D, which talks about creating an administrative unit. Well, this is also not the relevant option given the task given in the question. So that is why we are left with the option A. And that's exactly the correct answer for this question from the development tenant export custom roles to the JSON. See here in the option A, we are talking about exporting the custom roles to a JSON file from the development tenant. And what are we going to do next? Well, in the very next step, what we will do is we will copy all these custom roles from this development tenant to the production tenant. And also understand my friends that creating custom roles can be really complex jobs and we need a mechanism that can really handle all this complexity and JSON is the best fit for the same. So the JSON can really handle the complex hierarchies of the custom roles. So that's why my friends in a summary, first you export the custom roles in a JSON from the development environment and then you take all these copied JSON roles from the development environment to the production environment. And and one more very important thing or tip for the exam in this question, you are just being asked to do the very first step. But in many other questions, Microsoft can change the pattern. So in the real exam, they may ask you just to tell the first step or they can also ask you to tell both of the steps. So there might be a similar question where both of the steps are listed, exporting the custom roles and also importing the custom role to the production environment. So keep both the steps in your mind in case the question changes as we saw in the question number 186 just a while back. So now let's move on to the next question, question number 189 that says that your company has a Microsoft Intro ID subscription and you need to deploy five virtual machines to your company's virtual network subnet. Now now the virtual machines will each have both a public and a private IP address. Very important line that each virtual machines can have both public and a private IP address. Now the inbound and the outbound rules, security rules for all these virtual machines must be identical. So which of the following is the least number of network interfaces needed for this configuration? And your options are option A, 5, 
option B 10, option C 20 and option D 25. And the correct answer for the same is option A 5. And I hope you noted the important sections of the question. The first one is this one, 5 virtual machines. And the second one, as I just said, that each virtual machine can have both public and private IP addresses. Now let me jump on to the Microsoft documentation. So this is the Microsoft documentation titled as Virtual Networks and Virtual Machines in Microsoft Azure. And here I want to reach to the relevant section, which is this one, Network Interfaces. So first, let's understand what exactly is the network interface. Well, this is the interconnection between the virtual machine and the virtual network. So a virtual machine must have at least one NIC. In case you do not even create the NIC, even then the NIC will be created implicitly by the Microsoft. And the virtual machine can have more than one NIC, depending upon the size of the virtual machine that you create. And now that you understand what are network interfaces, let me jump on to the other relevant section here. That is this one, which says IP addresses. So here you can read that you can assign these type of IP addresses to a network interface in Microsoft Azure. And what are the IP addresses, the type of IP addresses? Well, public IP and private IP. And that's the exact ask of the question as well. Here you can see that. So we have five virtual machines. We can assign both the public and the private IP to each NIC, which is connected to the virtual machine. So that's why at least we would need five NICs or network interfaces for this configuration. And with that understanding, let's take a related question. Question number 190 that says that your company has a Microsoft Intro ID subscription and you need to deploy five virtual machines to your company's virtual network subnet. Very similar to the last question. The virtual machine, as we saw in the last question as well, each can have both public and private IP address and the inbound and the outbound security rules for all the virtual machines must be identical. So until now, the question is exactly the same as the previous one. And now the question changes. It says that which of the following is the least amount of security groups needed for this configuration. In the last question, we were talking about the network interfaces, while in this question, we're talking about the security groups. And what are the options? The options given are option A, one, option B5, option C7 and option D10. So could you guess the correct answer? Well, the correct answer is option A1. So we would need at least one security group for this configuration. So I hope you like the questions on Microsoft Entra ID today. You gain some insights, you learn something new on Microsoft Entra ID and you also get to familiarize what kind of questions can you expect in AZ104 related to the Microsoft Entra ID. In case you have some suggestions, some feedback or any part of the questions that you don't understand or maybe you have some counter view then do let me know in the comment section and yes very importantly in the next video i am going to focus on questions related to azure world security azure monitor and many more so please do subscribe to the channel so that you are getting the timely notifications and you are top of your preparations for az104 and that's all for today i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching